The stock market did not like what Jerome Powell just said. When he spoke today about where the Federal Reserve plans on taking interest rates, where mortgage rates ultimately are going, and so much more about the narrative or the story about inflation. Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. Pulled off on the side of the road. I kid you not to bring you this story. There, look at, see where I am? I'm over there. All right, this story comes out of CNBC. It's entitled, Fed Chair Powell says there has been a lack of further progress this year on inflation. Why? Tons of inflation reports are, or, uh, reports are coming out about inflation not coming down and the consumer is still being strong when it comes to spending. There's a lot more here to digest though. Think about this. It says, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said Tuesday that the US economy, while otherwise strong, has not seen inflation come back to the central bank's goal, pointing to the further unlikelihood that interest rate cuts are are in the offing anytime soon. Think about how many people are nervous, or honestly scared, because they got themselves into a mortgage a mere year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, and were told by their broker, by their real estate agent, don't worry about it. Marry the house, date the rate, right? Or marry the loan, date the rate, whatever it is. And they are finding themselves in a very serious situation where they cannot keep up with the payments. Think about all of the uh, bankers right now that are dealing with commercial mortgage-backed securities fallout. They are scared. What about the pension funds like the California Teachers Pension Fund <coughs> that had to take a $30 billion loan? This is insane. Just to patch up what's going on in their distressed real estate market for their, their clients. This is a very serious situation. And like I've been explaining before, the Fed can't lower rates. When they do, it'll be a little political move that will mean nothing because look at today as the bond rates are skyrocketing even higher, pushing mortgages and debt costs so much higher. It says here, uh, Jerome says, more recent data shows solid growth and continued strength in the labor market. Remember, these are numbers that are being lied to by the government, mind you but also a lack of further progress so far this year on returning to our 2% inflation goal. The Fed chief said during the panel talk, remember the Federal Reserve is hell bent on, what is it, destroying your purchasing power at a rate of 2% a year. That's why all those charts look amazing. Over the long term, your house goes up. It, sure, it drops a little bit here and there. It always goes up. Look, the stock market always goes up. It's because the dollar is being destroyed at a rate of a minimum 2%. And to be honest, because the way the government puts out their uh, numbers on inflation, that's actually not the real story. It's not the whole story. Type one if you agree with that. And we have to teach people this on such a, a basic fundamental level so that people start to do things different. They'll shift their, uh, their habits so we can help the nation. All right, says, echoing the recent statements by central bank officials, Powell indicated the current level of policy likely will stay in place until inflation gets closer to the target. Since July of 2023, the Fed has kept its benchmark interest rate in this July of 2023, think about it. We have not seen an interest rate hike since July of last year, yet mortgage rates are skyrocketing because the bond market is skyrocketing. The two year, the 10 year, it's getting worse. As a matter of fact, as those rates go higher, remember banks balance sheets that have bond, a bond portfolio that is held to maturity. Remember, those are, are losses are adding up. Now, they don't have to uh, claim them until, think about this, until they sell, right? You don't have to claim a loss. It's like having a stock that you bought at 100 bucks, it's worth 10 now, and you're like, technically, I don't have to claim that as a loss or book it as a loss, but in my head and my heart, I know exactly what's going on until I sell it. Well, here's the other problem. These banks are also having a hard time raising money because less people are walking through the door of that bank to ask for a loan every day, which means they have less revenue. So when they go to ask for more, think about how serious this is. Uh, from other banks, other banks are like, well, let me look at your, your balance sheet. And they go, geez, oh, look at the book value of what you got going on over here in the bonds. 
And remember, the Fed funds window, I mean, they have reined back so tight. That's why we're about to see the next wave, the banking crisis 3.0. We had the first one last year. We had the second with New York Community Bank this year. You're about to see a whole new slew of banks failing by around the fall. Now, please mark this video, save the uh, title, save the link, and you'll see in the fall, we're gonna be in another banking crisis. I know it sounds crazy. This is one of those videos I talk about where I say, I've got this all sort of kept away for a catalog. Now it says, again, since July, 2023, uh, the Fed has kept its benchmark rate in the target range between five and a quarter, five and a half. This is the highest level in 23 years. That was the result of 11 consecutive uh, rate hikes that began in March of 2022. So when they say it's the highest in 23 years, please understand it didn't even get this high, this drastic to the, in the run up of Lehman Brothers collapsing. All right, it didn't take that much to crush this dam. The difference we have right now, and this is the big key indicator, is that the government is borrowing money at such a breakneck pace from the Federal Reserve and paying people, they're salting people. They've got government programs out there so that they could turn around. Hey, it's just a little nothing. What's going on? What can I do for you? I need to go to San Jose. San Jose. Have you ever heard that song? Do you know the way to San Jose? You haven't? You got to listen to it. Okay. So you're going to stay on I-5, but do you have a, a Google like a... Oh, man. Okay. So if you, if you go into Stockton, this is going to be really, this is awkward. It, AJ, come around. AJ, come around. My my son's gonna help you. Okay. Yeah. If you want, you could pull it around, then you're not in the camera view because it's live right now. We're live. You can wave to everybody. Just wait. <laughs> if you want to pull around, AJ's gonna give you a hand real quick. He'll show you how to get there. All right? No, don't be sorry at all. It's all right. You never know what's gonna happen. I thought maybe one of you guys uh, saw me on the highway and stopped by. Give her directions to San Jose. All right, she's probably wanting to go get her freedoms uh, taken away. Okay, so here we go. Um, the recent data have clearly not given us greater confidence and instead indicate that it's likely to take longer than expected to achieve that confidence, he said. That said, we think policy is well positioned to handle the risks that we face. Powell added, I can't get that San Jose song out of my head now. Um, that until inflation shows more crop progress, we can maintain the current level of restriction for as long as needed. So here is the truth. <laughs> Banks are getting squeezed every day and they're getting squeezed even more as these bond rates go up. Uh, home buyers are being squeezed as the mortgage rates go up and the consumer is being squeezed as personal and credit card debt blows up. Point being is that we are headed to an ep epic collapse. Type three if you agree with me. Type four if you live in San Jose and type five if you never want to live in San Jose. Now I'm gonna go and share with her the truths about San Jose. I hope you guys have a great day. The Economic Ninja is out.